Before the movie starts, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be kept informed of all new content. Now, enjoy! Seeing that cowboy down there makes me kind of homesick. Somebody important. Very important. He owns this beach, too. You're trespassing. Well, out in Montana, at the foot of the Snowy Mountains, there's a pretty blue lake. Isn't as big as this one, but it's sweet water and always cool. Every so often, a fellow rides by there and his feet are hot and tired while he climbs down and paddles a minute. We don't call that trespassing. We call it visit. If you'd waited two minutes, I'd have driven you into town. I don't like to wait. So I notice. Friend of yours? A visitor. His feet were hot and tired. So he used your beach. I think I'm carrying part of it away in my boots. Any charges? No. With compliments of the house. Whoa, hold it. Oh, a little hot. Very nice. Good head. Fine neck. She carries herself well. She's got breeding. Glad you like her. You don't mind if I look? You can look. Go ahead, Hank. Can I give you a lift into town? Thanks, yes. I'm headed for Pacific Street. You're quite an admirer of horse flesh, aren't you? Yeah. It's my business. Your first trip to the coast? First trip. Out to see the elephant, huh? Come again? Oh, that's what we call doing the town. Oh. Well, something like that. The fellow owes me $500 I'm here to collect. Ever hear of a place called El Dorado? Who hasn't? It's about the hottest spot on the Barbary Coast.
Well, does it live up to your expectations? Mm, no. And then again, yes. <laughs> They call me Duke Fergus in Montana. If you're ever traveling through and want to paddle your feet in fresh water, look me up. I remember that. Good evening, boss. Hello, Charlie. on the agenda. Weber's raised the price of his burgundy again, so I canceled our order. Moffat is out tonight. I put manners on roulette and move bonds over to the dice table. Captain Ford needs 10 seamen for the Golden Princess. Mm -hmm. She sails Tuesday on the morning tide. I think that's all, except this. The Society for the Abolition of the Barbary Coast and Adjacent Area held its first musical last night. <laughs> Rather a long name, isn't it? I can shorten it. It's the anti-you society, <laughs> and your family has just contributed $300. Well, that ought to make my father chairman of the board. Martha, send another 200 in his name. And charge it to what? Advertising. I think you're mad. That's why we get along so well. Mr. Morell, funny is fun. But when the family you're supporting tries to run you out of town, it's time it's that... It's time he forgot the Morells and got back to business. Oh, uh, Gleason, the agent, has a girl outside. He thinks she'll fit into your show. Oh, what do you think? She's interesting to look at. Good. Let's look at her. Mr. Morell, Rita Dane, the new sensation of San Francisco. to have the most beautiful ankles in the world. All right, if she can sing. All right, if she can't sing. Are you in a mood to be sensational? Any time. <laughs> Ask Miss Terry to step in. I've got two great, big, baby blue eyes. Big baby eyes of blue. I've got two great, big, baby blue eyes. And what those eyes can do. They will show you when I'm lonely, they'll show you when I'm sad, they'll show you when I'm angry, and show you when I'm glad. I've got two great, big, baby blue eyes, and baby, I've got my eye on you. They will show you when I'm happy, they'll show you what I crave, but when I look at you, dear, I can't make them behave. I've got two great, big, baby blue eyes, and baby, I've got my eye on you. Thank you. You're quite welcome, both of you. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Miss uh, Dean, I want you to know Miss Terry. Uh, haven't you been saying something about a vacation, my dear? Do I look worn and tired? A little, around the edges. We're not going to like each other, are we? I'm sure we're not. <laughs> hey, you let me know? Uh, yes, I'll let you know. Oh, 
Was it a sensation? Definitely. Why? Just wanted your opinion. Do you suppose she could fill your place in the show? Tito, has anyone ever called you... You uh... have. Often. That's why I want you to meet each new prospect that comes to San Francisco. One of these days, I'll meet a new prospect. And when you do? Goodbye, Tito. Oh, how can you say that to the man who loves you? Time for your change, Miss Terry. That's you, Flaxen, and the beautiful. I've got two great, big, baby blue eyes. <laughs> Yes. There's a chump outside, says you owe him some money. Shall I have him tossed out? Send a bottle of Lanston's 93 to his table with my compliments and tell him I'll be out directly. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Martha. Tell Joe to put another glass in that window. <laughs> Compliments of the house. You're Tito Morrell. That's what they call me. About that 500. I'll take it in gold. Oh, yes, that's for that black horse you shipped out to me. The same. I paid the man who delivered him. And won it right back at roulette. That's sort of like taking it out of one pocket and putting it in the other. Unless that wheel is on the level, which I doubt. I can see your point of view. 500 in gold. I suppose you're going to spend it wisely. Of course. I'm going to spend it on wine. Splendid. Successful holiday. Oh. Uh -huh. 
hundred. If you're going to spend this on uh, wine, perhaps I can help you select the best. Perhaps you can. Any particular type in mind? A very particular type. I'm afraid that type is rather expensive. So expensive, in fact, that I reserve it for my own table. Five hundred dollars is a lot of money. Not at El Dorado. Suppose we make it a thousand. Cards. I card, double or nothing. You uh, cut rather deep. Suppose you cut. For me. Hard card to beat, Tito. Oh. Another 500 in gold for the gentleman from Montana. Well, I was just thinking oh, that... Oh, Flaxen, I don't like that wrap. You'd better. It's going to cost 2,500. I still don't like it. Spend enough and get a good one. I was just thinking that... Uh... I suppose you don't like the gown, either. What did it cost? 1,200. It's all right for the afternoon. Get something better for the evening. I was just thinking. What were you thinking, cowboy? How small a thousand dollars looks from this angle. I could give you some good advice. Keep your money and take the first train back to Montana. Dollar gets you 50, you won't. That's one bet you'd win tonight. Would you teach me something about the game, lady? I never played before. Haven't you? Well, let's play. And eight's the line. Eight. Eight's the point. All right, sir, here you and go. And a miss out. Well, that's it. Come on, Jack. Next shooter, place your bets, please. All or nothing. And a seven. The gentleman wins. Stay with it, Montana. But that's all bold. It's gold. Another seven. The gentleman wins again. Pay him off. Miraculous. The man must be the king of luck. The king of luck comes to the Barbary Coast. It's a wonderful idea. That's good for a column. Let's take a look. Oh, did he? And it's another natural. Pay the gentleman off. Eight thousand dollars. That's good for three columns. Man from Montana breaks the bank at El Dorado. <laughs> Fresh from the wide open spaces with his pocket stuffed with nuggets. With his pocket stuffed with nuggets. And another pass. The fourth pass. Why didn't somebody tell me about this before? <laughs> and the natural. Pay the gentleman off. Sixteen thousand dollars. That closes the bank. Here, rush that to my night editor. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> the king of luck! What? You can go home. The bank's closed. His pockets are full of niggas. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the king of luck just won $10,000 in niggas. <laughs> the king of luck just won <laughs> Hey, the king of luck! Collingswood. Yes, sir. A bottle of Lanson's 93 for the winner. With compliments for the house. Oh, Collingswood. Yes, sir. Lanson's 93 for the house. Compliments of the winner. Yes, sir. And where shall I send the bill? To the King of Luck. And the address? Anywhere on Pacific Street between Kearney and DuPont. <laughs> Come on, King. The name's Duke, lady. You've been promoted. All down on this roll. Something in the black. Oh, it's wonderful. He can't lose. It's fantastic. I've never seen so many dips on the t tips. Uh, the, the table's full of dips. Hey, waiter. Champagne for everybody. The best you got. And cigars for the ladies. You wouldn't kid a fella, would you? Repeater, send in the black. Does that answer your question? It's better than a license to steal. What are you going to do with these, sucker? Well, let them ride. Spin it, brother. Spin it and weep. Well, why spin it? Just pay them. Oh, 
Another repeater. That does it, brother. You've closed the bank. What's next? Well, it's Mother Bronson's, Billy McCarthy's place, and Shanghai Kelly. Take your pick. Let's take them all. I'm sure the boys will be delighted. <laughs> Did you take out the champagne? There you are, sucker. <laughs> Why, his pockets are stuffed with suckers. Ah, uh, shut up. <laughs> knows my wheel. I didn't have a chance. Why, he was into me for 8,000 before I could close down. Yeah, what happens? Did she go crazy? Or are you two trying to pull a Swifty? Like most of you charming creatures, the lady is difficult. Well, so am I, especially in an alley. Hold it, Calico. You're asking for trouble. We should give him the works. The newspapers and the Holy Joes up on Knob Hill would like nothing better than a good murder this week. They've started a cute little outfit called the Society for the Abolition of the Barbary Coast. Yeah, there's a new one of them every day. Let him squawk. I want my marbles back from that dame. The lady's name is Miss Terry. Some of these nights I'm going to gamble. I'm just a little bit faster than you are, Tito. Gamble now, Calico. Maybe you are faster. Close. Too close. Almost followed Dan Manners. And the lady's name is still Miss Terry. About the man from Montana. Suppose we have Shanghai Kelly send a few boys over. A nice long trip to China never hurt anybody. What's your idea, Byline? I suggest to stuff the body in a trunk. Use a hatchet, a nice big hatchet, all covered with blood. Oh, wonderful. The best story I've had in months. Where's it going to happen? <laughs> that gives you a general idea. But it doesn't give me back the 8,000 Flaxen took out of my till. I still think we should give him the works. They just broke Nevada. I passed the word and the other game shut down. Where are they? Coming your way. Let that be a lesson to him, Angel. Oh, no, champagne. 93. Well, how goes it, cowboy? Good, very good indeed. You know, I'm beginning to like the Barbary Coast. As a matter of fact, I might decide to buy this place and settle down. Not a bad idea, but you know, the man who owns El Dorado and all that goes with it should know how to handle himself at a card table. And maybe you think I can't? Why, Tito, I learned how to make cards sit up and say uncle before I could. Or don't you believe me? Oh, no, no, no. It's not that I don't believe you. I just would like you to show me how you do it. At stud, for instance, no limit. Okay, brother. Right this way. Yes, Mark. <laughs> this is where you came in, baby. 8,000. That squares me. Oh, uh, with the compliments of the house. You went for six. Mr. Fergus, a bottle of Lanson's 93. With the compliments of the house.
you got very sleepy and you couldn't sleep on the floor at El Dorado, so you're my guest. Just like that. Just like that. Not even one cartwheel. You had your night on the Barbary Coast, but this is tomorrow. Here's your railroad ticket back to Montana. Train goes at three. Perhaps you're right. Still, it was fun while it lasted. I'm glad. I like you. You're a right guy. And you don't meet many on the Barbary Coast. You got me all confused, Flaxen. Is that your real name? My name's Anne. Oh, that's pretty, too. How a nice girl like you can... Good work in a place like that is more than you can see. Oh, Duke. If you'd muffed that line, I would have been disappointed. Maybe I am a green ant at this sort of thing, but... Remember I told you about the blue lake at the foot of the snowy mountains? Well, there's a cabin near that lake. And close beside it is a forest of firs with branches that reach right up to the sky. There's horses, cattle, and the air is so clean you can wash your face in it. I own that cabin. Because it's nothing like this. It's a small cabin. But it's got a nice fireplace. The roof doesn't leak. But there are mice in every closet. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for the night's lodging. Why, well, aren't you going to stay for breakfast? No, I think I'll just say goodbye. For a little while. Just goodbye. You'll be back. Can't think of anything that'd bring me back. It'll be back. Sammy! If I begin to think, I don't know how to roll those things right. You roll them perfect. Now you gotta learn how to make them stop. Well, that does it. Maybe you better stick to cow. Nice looking bunch, aren't they? How many heads you shipping this year? Oh, about 500. Hey, Jared! Got a spare horse? Well, this is my station, Smokey. Slow her down. Sure you wouldn't rather stand and play? I'll loan you some more. Got back quick. You said one night in San Francisco would be enough. Duke. Yeah. I made a I made a loan. I'm going to repay you that 500 I lost. Oh, forget it. Did you get it back? Sure. You still got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. What happened? Well, uh, 
You wouldn't understand. Love, here is my heart. One rose for your hair. Pretty one. Yours if you keep it today. Yours if you throw it away. Da, 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 love, here it is. Keep it moving. What's the matter with the old man? You wouldn't understand. I'm going into town. I'll take him. Oh, hello, big fella. Did you finish with the round now? Nope. Didn't think so. Well, what can I do for you? You once told me gambling is a trade. I told you the truth. Is it a trade any man can learn? Mm, enough to get by. That's not good enough. Who are you mad at? Ever hear of a fella called Tito Morrell? Uh, once or twice. Could you teach me to take him? Now, will you take some advice from a man who has known you and liked you ever since you were able to stand on your hind legs? Nope. That's what I thought. How big's the bankroll? Ranch will bring 10, stock twice that much. Hmm. All right. Now, the first thing to learn about a deck of cards is how to handle them. They're a whole lot like women. Usually, when you pick one up, you wish you hadn't. However... This is it. This table's reserved. For me, Collingswood. Get us some Lanson's 93. And send a bottle to Mr. Morrell with my compliments. That's uh, Whit Calvert dealing blackjack. Pretty fast on seconds. Silk Manor's on the wheel. Fixed? Sure. 
Little Chicago at Faro. Merv Rosen on poker, and Barnes and Moffat at dice. Who's at the stick? Barnes. They're the best in the country, Duke. It ain't gonna be easy. Did we expect it to be? <coughs> Something bothering you? Why, yes, sir. I've seen this gentleman before, but I can't quite place him. He's the third girl from the end. Harry, I am feeling very blue. Lonely as can be, won't you speak to me? Harry, you are such a naughty tease, won't you be good to me, please? Harry, you're my pretty little Harry. Hello, sucker. You'll be my bride in June. Don't you remember it was late in last December? That you promised to travel with me away out west. Yama, 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 yama. Gee, kid, just as sweet as you can be, kid. I'm yours to the end of time. There's not a minute that another girl is in it. With me? Harry, come join your Harry. Carrie, Mary, Harry is the sweet and most beautiful ride. Now, well, there's something you forgot to tell me about. And it might answer a lot of questions. I thought it might. Did I ever tell you that women and cards don't mix? I don't intend mixing them. Well, which comes first? Cards. I may have to remind you of that occasionally. Wolf! Wolf, where on earth have you been? Why, well, I haven't seen you since Tucson. I guess that's right. Marie! Why, Wolfie, honey. We've missed you so. Oh, cut it out, will you, kids? I'm busy. I'll uh, see you in a saloon or something. Go in and buy yourself a bucket of beer, huh? Goodbye, Wolfie. Bye. Oh, Wolfie, honey. So women and cards don't mix, eh? Oh, that's got nothing to do with my professional life. That's strictly the social side. Harry, you're my pretty little Harry. Society for the Adornment and Beautification of San Francisco. Sign your father's name. Certainly. Each year it costs a little more to keep the Morel family at the top of the social register. Now they're trying to get Caruso to sing here in April. And you pay the bill, I suppose. I suppose so. When do I get to meet this fabulous family of yours, Tito? You don't. If I'm only allowed in the house on Christmas and Easter, what chance would you have? I ought to resent that. Why? I don't. Laxon. The Morel family is San Francisco. It's very mellow, gracious, touched with the charm of the old world. Oh, there have been new additions, to be sure, things that are typically American. But we've kept all the good things that were brought across the oceans by the conquistadores, and we'll always keep them, in spite of the Chamber of Commerce, the Tribune, the Star, or what have you. And I'll keep the Morel family on the crest of Knob Hill, despite their complete abhorrence of their oldest son, Tito. You did that well. <laughs> I thought so, too. <laughs> Any particular reason for this visit? Yes, there was a reason. Oh, do you remember that big fellow from Montana? Duke Fergus. I'd forgotten his name. He's out front. I hope you haven't any ideas for another wild evening. Keep clear of him tonight, will you? Premonition? Something like that. Strange. This 
sooner than I expected. Tito, you're an idiot. But a very charming idiot. I see you've brought your own dealer. I've heard of you, Mr. Wiley. You've quite a reputation in the small towns. Sure, they tell me. Aren't you a bit out of your class tonight? Oh, I'm not playing. I'm sorry. I thought we might provide you with some action. So did I. So I brought this along, just in case. Exactly what is it you want, you? Action. I lost a few dollars at El Dorado. You lost nothing except a few hundred dollars that I gave you. Then let's put it this way. I didn't win anything. This time you expect to? Could be. For some reason, I'd rather not play against you, Duke. Suppose we say that tonight you're my guest. I'm not your guest, Tito. As you wish. Excuse me, I'll get a table. We could be wrong. What do you mean? Well, it's just barely possible that these fellas are smarter than I am. Well, you picked a fine time to tell me. Yeah, I'll be glad to get home. I can't think of anything that would bring me back, the man said. The man was wrong. Uh, oh, shake hands with Wolf Wiley. Hello, Wolf. Hiya, Trouble. Mr. Morrell has your table ready, sir. Poker. Would you like to watch? I wouldn't miss it for Minx. Who's Minx? Tito, I thought I... It was his idea. That's right. Oh, I see. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Give me a hundred dollars worth. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Pocket stuff with nuggets. Er, nuggets. <laughs> Who is that character? He works for Cyrus Danver. Cyrus owns the San Francisco Star. Byline writes for the Star. I like him. Is that important? It is, on the Barbary Coast. Do you like me, Mr. Morrell? As of today, yes. Duke Fergus from Montana. So I've heard. Hello, beautiful. Hello, Pappy. Are you still saying those awful things about Tito in your newspaper? Oh, I'm going to run him out of town if I can. And then while you do your drinking. <laughs> I wish you were more like Shanghai Kelly and Calico Jim and the other rats on Pacific Street, Tito. <laughs> It'd be better fun fighting you. Why fight me? Why fight a fire? Am I that bad? Yes, Tito. You're bad for San Francisco. We've got to get rid of you. You're on in five minutes, Miss Terry. Call and raise. But I have to be running along. I'll see you all later. Well, wait a minute. Don't you want to see me win the first part of the evening? I might bring you bad luck. I doubt it. Raise. How big? Cards. 
You, Fergus, back from Montana with the bankroll, took Tito Moran to the cleaners last night. It was high stakes and fast play at El Dorado with the promise of more action to follow. Horseshoe Brown is the latest to learn. I still think we should give him the works. Latest to learn that the man from Montana plays a fast game of cards. Duke Fergus went through Horseshoe's bank in less time than it takes to tell. It was Shanghai Kelly who took it the hard way last night when Duke Fergus sat in for a few hands of stud. Shanghai asked for it and Shanghai... Are the rest the same? Just about. Thanks, dear. Well, where's he tonight? At Calico Jim's. I warned Calico not to deal to Fergus. Calico isn't dealing. Joe Disco. That wasn't smart. What's bad about it? The Chamber of Commerce reports that today San Francisco is the seventh city in the United States with a population of 425,000. The entire company of the Metropolitan Opera is being brought to San Francisco. <laughs> you boys ought to learn how to read. You know, you'd be surprised what you find in a newspaper. It even tells you the date, January the 10th, 1906. What does all that mean in English? That the city of San Francisco is suffering from growing pains, gentlemen. It wants to be beautiful. It wants to be big. It wants grand opera. It doesn't want us. I've been hearing that song for ten years. So what does it get him? Nothing. Until you idiots bring Joe Disco into town to make headlines for Cyrus Danver. Here, have another to recover. I still think we should give him the works. You talk too much. Calico says he'll wait until midnight if you want to see the show. All right. Let's go. Calico. Maybe, but it's my way. Mind if I watch? I'd like you to watch. I'll take the next one off the top. That's the same as calling me a thief before witnesses. Yep. I'll wait just 30 seconds for you to apologize. Must be slow. I'll cash these in. Unless you got another dealer. Watch it, the coppers. Get in behind the box. Chess piece. Orchestra. Join us. With pleasure. Calico. What's it all about? About a hundred dollars to sit in, Casey. Think you can spare it? Four blues. thing, isn't it? About twice as big as that one over there. With a patio? Mm-hmm. And with no mice in every closet. <laughs> You're a funny Joe. Why did you come back? You said I'd be back. I picked you for a chump. Is a man a chump for going after what he wants? He is if he knows he can't have it. That isn't the way I think. But you will. 
Going into town? Mm -hmm. Give me your lift. Sure. That's a far country fun house you got there, mister. I can take a look inside? Naturally. Close down every place on Pacific Street. I think so. What are you trying to prove? When I want something, I get it. And what do you want, as though I didn't know? Do I get it? Get what? My leading lady. I've already got a contract. Flaxen, take a look around. You don't think I'd do all this and then be stopped by a contract? One that undoubtedly has mice in every closet. All this for me? Mm hmm It's a lovely compliment, but I wish you hadn't. Why? This isn't your racket. One of these days, it's going to catch up with you. Or you'll catch up with yourself, and then you'll go away. Maybe not alone. I'm not going anywhere. I already got there. A dollar gets you a mink coat. When that curtain goes up, you'll have a new contract. Park, scene, dark. Silvery moon is shining through the trees. Cast to me, you. Sound of kisses floating on the breeze. Act one, be gone. Dialogue, where would you like to spoon? My cue with you. Underneath the silvery moon. Maybe you'll listen when I tell you we've got to get rid of Duke Fergus. We played that scene in the last act and the customer started to reach for their hats. Duke Fergus wants to see you. I still say we should... We should give him the works, I know. Hello. Hello. Complaints from Calico and Kelly? Few. Not enough cuspid horse? One reason I like you, Duke, is because so often we think I like it. Do we? Mm-hmm. Flaxen's contract. Just one dollar more than you can afford. That, for instance? Not interested. I've offered to buy that contract, Tito. I also talked to my lawyer. He 
tells me it isn't worth a quarter of flax and takes you to court. I could have told you that. And for less money, perhaps she's got what she wants. What's your price? Not a chance, Duke. And without Flaxen, you're dead. There isn't another girl in town that would make the silver dollar pay off. Maybe. Why so serious? Just wondering. Whether I love you? Something like that. Well, don't be so casual about it. Or haven't you heard that I've been offered the star dressing room at the Silver Dollar? Duke thinks you're worth that much to him. Hmm. I want more money. And a new coat and a sunken tub in my dressing room. Maybe I'm not fooling. <laughs> Maybe you'd better go where those things grow. I want you to. Do you? Now, now. Tito, there comes a time in every girl's life when a man needs a punch in the nose. Have you had a good look at the inside of the silver dollar? Why bother? It'll never open. That's a lot of money. Oh, stop being a fool. That I don't like. Is that important? Very, if you want to keep your show going. Meaning what? It's a short walk to the silver dollar. Now, you stop this nonsense about the silver dollar. You're going to stay where Who you says are. Who so? I say? Tito! Not from you nor any man alive. Come down here. And I want a sunken tub in my dressing room. Awkward, isn't it? Not exactly. The Silver Dollar is a great big place. Not that big. You think well of yourself, don't you, Rita? Mm-hmm. And I never tell me any lies. Why kid about it? You wanted flax, and now you got her. You don't need me. That's what I say. You see what I mean? You gonna take that sitting down, too? Go away, stupid. Of course, you realize this is gonna cost you a lot of money, Tito. Yes. I realize. Naturally. Huh? I'll see him in a little while. Bathtub's in the flow. <laughs> Bubbles. <laughs> Miss Flaxon says she sees you naturally in a little while. Oh. May I use your telephone? Huh? Oh, that thing. You twist the handle once and someone says, this is a bar. Fergus, are they still coming in? Yes, sir. Big carriage train. Been coming in steady ever since midnight. Good, good, good. Very elegant indeed, Mr. Fergus. First time I've seen you in tails. First time I ever wore them. When you sit down, do you give it this or this? Happy? Sort of. You should be. You've shown San Francisco that what you want, you get. Have I proven it to you? Sort of. Now I'd like to prove it to me. Very pretty. Could have stayed in Montana and had one of these. And a house on a cliff overlooking the Pacific? It's beautiful. The Pacific? Mm-hmm. The Pacific. I suppose this isn't the way. 
It isn't. You've got rouge all over your face. Flaxen, is that the best you can do? Usually, I save those for the man I love. Usually? That was an exception. I thought I bought your contract. You did. And tonight, on stage, you'll get everything that goes with that contract. Songs, dances, and witty sayings. One of us is confused. Must be the man from Montana. Since 93 for this table, compliments of the house. Yes, sir. Aren't you pouring it on a little, Duke? Maybe not. We'll be partners soon. In what? Barbary Coast Incorporated. Maybe I'd rather compete. What makes you think you can? Drag up a chair and sit down. We'll talk it over. We'll talk it over later. Take off your hats. I still say we should give him the works. <laughs> oh, Duke. Meet Tom Buckman. He's chairman of the board, Mid Pacific Steamship Company. How are you, Tom? Fred Mellon. He's in oil. Well, Where are you? Well, you certainly kept your word. This is bigger and better than anything in town. You think so? Aren't you starting your show rather late? Well, what do you think this? Oh, well, Flaxen will be on soon enough. Ah, uh, but not soon enough for Tom. Who are you to talk? As a matter of fact, I didn't propose to Flaxen until after she turned you down five times. Four times. Keep the record straight. Fred here is still one up on it. Well, wait a minute. Did I hear right? Each one of you has asked Flaxen to marry him? Oh, you too. A new member of the club. <laughs> That's Bill O'Hara, owns the Gotham Hotel. Lou Payne, the Payne Warehouse Company. Duncan Barrett, who brought the railroad into Oregon. Eddie Andrews is missing. He's in New York. Surprised at the competition? Well, it explains a lot of things. I forgot to tell you, I'm a little stuck myself. Oh, Wolfie. <laughs> See you later, Jim. <laughs> right. Hello, Paxson. Hello, Tito. But I called in the plumbers. Plumbers? That's right. They're installing a sunken tub in your dressing room at El Dorado. I can't do that to him. He asked for it. Everyone in San Francisco knows I love you. Do you? And everyone in San Francisco knows I love you. Do you? Then go over there like a good little girl and sit down. We've got a visitor. I wouldn't if I were you. Stand still. No nonsense, Tito. Don't worry, honey. I wouldn't hurt the man for the world. Sit down, sucker. Watson, honey, the gentleman of the press would like a few shots. You don't 
don't sit down, they'll get it. You'll be right there. I'll be right there, Byline. Flaxen's got an item for you, Byline. She opens it at Dorado, April the 18th. Why, that's tomorrow. No, it's today. Get the general idea? You've built your entire show around one woman. Without her, you can't draw enough tray to fill the lobby. The silver dollar opens and closes in one, and this time you don't even get a railroad ticket back to Montana. Was Flaxen in on this? <laughs> what do you think? Yes, I know, but don't try it. Why not? I think it'd be an excellent idea. <laughs> Wolf, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Walking into a lady's boudoir unannounced? Didn't you know I would? Yes. That's what I thought. He's resting. Tito. You're on in five minutes, Miss Terry. Songs, dances, and witty sayings, Miss Terry. I didn't want to come beneath that spell But love doesn't ask me for you I'm only human, and somehow I fell. But that's what a woman was born to do. I realized the day I met him that he was all I yearned to find. Although I know I should forget him That man is always on my mind He'll never know I'm crying for him I understand I'm not his kind He'll never know how I adore him See, Charlie, she means you. He'll go away. I won't know where. I won't know where he will be. He'll dream the love dreams that I never Tito went home. And never think about me. I'm broken hearted, no pretending Or make believing love is blind I don't know what will be the ending That man is always on
Boston and Market Streets are afire. The Grand Cole Monod knock buildings are down. They're trying to stop it at Van Ness. They're dynamite at the Palace and Flood Building. I got that. What's new? Here you are, proclamation by the mayor. Federal troops and members of the police force are authorized to kill any and all persons found looting. The Barbary Coast is running mad. We can move her in a moment. This is Dr. Gorham. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Are you her friend, too? Yes. She must be a fine woman to have so many people who love her. Well, how is she? Oh, she'll live. She'll live. And someday, perhaps, she may walk again. I don't know. I've done all I can. I would like to do more. There's so many. I believe they're ready now. Next, please. Don't be too sure. Duke, I'm frightened. I heard what they said. You're alive. Yes, but will I? You'll walk. See if you can find Tito, will you? I want to see him. Where's Tito? Trying to save Pacific Street? Or what's left of it. Well, that's the way it went. Some lost everything, some lost nothing. Flaxen wants to see you. They need men up on Telegraph Hill if you're going to work tonight. She's paralyzed. It's going to be tough. Go on. I'm all right. You know him? Yes. I know. Would it make any difference? <sighs> Darling. I'll be all right again. Of course. Of course you will. Hello, Flaxen. How's it go? Say, Shanghai and the others are talking with the city hall crowd. They want you in on it. All right, I'll be right there. Cito. I'll be back in an hour, Flaxen. I... There's a new city growing out of the ashes of San Francisco. Those who get in first get most. I want a large slice of that city, perhaps all of it. Why don't you run for mayor? My place is right behind the mayor. I'll be back. Thanks. How's the big fire? Just about under control. Can't go beyond the warehouse and Battery Street. Good. How is she? That gal is gamer than a banty rooster. When are they taking her home? Hank's bringing a rig now. I'll go get her. Ooh. Hello, D.A. How are you? Ready to go? Mm-hmm. Your face is dirty. So is yours. Tito didn't come back. Yeah, I know. That's why I got the kiss. Ow! I don't want it. Good evening, gentlemen. You might as well take it away because I'm not going to have it. You see? What can you do with a woman like that? Why not agree with her? Sometimes it's safer. 
I wish you would take it. Too much excitement. I don't want to go to sleep. Stubborn brat. Yes, very stubborn. She even insists she's going to walk. And you don't think she... I don't know. But I do know she'll have no more visiting tonight. Oh, but I... Sorry, gentlemen. He's the doctor. Bye-bye, beautiful. Flexen's putting me up until I can find a place to live. Your house gone? Yes, all of Knob Hill. Even the places were undamaged by the quake or dynamite to stop the fire. I'll be back as soon as I find the time. Thank you, Doctor. Could you use some coffee? Yes, I could. Of course, you know Buckman and Mallon, Mr. Samter and Ben of the Merchant Association. Oh, yeah. Bill McGale, the real estate board. How do you do? Good evening. Thompson, Friedman, Mayor Plumas, and Tom Braille. He's backing Jim Phelan for mayor. How do you do? How do you do? Sit down. I'll take mine standing. I don't want to hold up your meeting. It was called for your benefit. San Francisco's not my city. Would you like it run by Tito Morrell? Well, I'm sorry, gentlemen. I don't care who runs it. I'm heading for Montana. And I'm tagging along. That Duke Fagus man, he says he's going back home. He didn't lose much time. That ain't him going. It's someone coming. Who, Tito? And retinue. Tell him I want to see him. I told you he was here. and says she wants to see you. I'll see her later, Beulah. But she wants you now. Later. That's what you told her last time. What right have you to come barging in here? Priority? I helped the lady to select this home. All right, there's your man. You can tell him what we want. I don't want anything from him. You're the ones who thought this up. It's just that we remembered what you said at the opening of the Silver Dollar about Barbary Coast Incorporated. Yes? Well, it's along the same lines. We're sort of reorganizing, and Tito here figured you'd want in. Don't deal me in on this. You don't approve, eh, Tito? Frankly, I think you're a chump. A little lucky at times, but hardly the type for a job like ours. Didn't I hit you hard enough the last time you ran off at the mouth? Evidently not. Or uh, didn't you hear who Flaxen wants to see? Did a rain check go with that offer of yours? You mean you're with us? For a better San Francisco? No, I'm again him. So am I. Thank you, Wolfie. Satisfied? Not exactly. The way you put that offer, Duke couldn't do much else but turn it down. Now, what we wanted to what say... What you want to say means nothing. For my money, you're a bunch of sniveling cripples. You've been using me for a crutch ever since I came to the Barbary Coast. Now you're looking for another crutch. Take it or leave it. If you're too weak to stand on your own feet, I've got no time for any of you. Hank, I'm going to walk. Yes, ma'am. And you can take the word of Duke Fergus on anything. When Duke tells you to put your money on Jim Phelan, he's telling you true. Yes, sir, Duke Fergus is a man who knows. Tino, you're through. Not while Duke Fergus runs Pacific Street. Who says that Duke Fergus runs Pacific Street? I do. What are you going to do about it? What have you got in the 5th precinct? Nothing yet. The polls aren't closed. Do we have to wait until the polls close? In the 5th precinct, yes. Why? Duke Fergus has 20 men there. How about the 14th? The same. The 22nd and 8th, too. Uh, what kind of a play is the bar getting? Good. The wheels are slow. 
Too much talk and excitement. Oh. The polls are closed. That's, That's, it. Right. We'll be right now. That's it. Good luck, Mr. Morrell. Why bother about luck when we know the result? Do we? Miss Flaxen, you're not strong enough to go gallivanting around town, especially election night. Strong or not, she'll do it anyway. Hill returns? Not in yet. Well, he should be here. Well, don't worry, I'm safe. How was he shape up? Oh, just about the way we figured. Tito did a good job along the coast, though. He carried these for Schmitz with a safe margin. We broke even here. Give us five more precincts and we're in. You've got them. Here are five precincts. It'll go Jim feeling all the way. Yeah, we'll all feel better when they're in. Oh, Tom, phone downtown and get a list of official recording tallies. Check on these five precincts and let me know right away. They should have been in an hour ago. You're licked. Well, that's not what it says here. It says there that you need one, two, three, four, five precincts to win. They're safe. Yes, in Tito's pocket. What about it, Tom? No official tally as yet. And there never will be. I just saw Tito's strong arm squad headed for the eighth. Skullduggery, no doubt. Why didn't you say so? All right, you good and righteous citizens of San Francisco. They're trying to take your city. If you want it, go fight for it. Eighth precinct, gentlemen. Duke Ferguson, he's bringing trouble. Let's get out of here. Come on. Hey, come on. Never mind them, find the tally sheets. They're not here. And we're through. If the ballots and the official tally sheets are gone, a protest won't be worth the papers written off. Why protest? Register the vote in Phelan's mayor of San Francisco. But the tally sheets are gone. The Eldorado, and that's where we're going. Hold her head, Rudy, will you? Quite a mess, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. I'm lonely, won't someone look after me? I really will try to be good company, so have a heart, have a heart. Take one, it's perfectly free. And after you take it, just so you won't break it, please give your heart to me. Oh, I need a man's protection, not to mention his affection, and he'll find that I'm true blue. How I want a honey bunny who will make my whole life sunny, so I'll leave it up to you. Oh, have a heart, have a heart. Oh, won't you please have a heart? I'm lonely, won't someone look after me? I really will try. We didn't lose any time. Oh. That's just a temporary affair. Uh, this, just a temporary affair. Please give your heart to me. you too, Flax. Are you going to oblige? Who could refuse? All five precincts? That's it. Good. Love here is my heart. If you keep it today 
yours if you throw it away. Whether you Stop to think. That's what I thought. You gonna get those tally sheets? Why? Well, if you don't know, I can't tell you. Duke, there's a certain something inside a man that makes him do things. Unpleasant things. Things for which there's no reward. You can't always do the things you'd like to do. You don't always get the things you want. But you've got to be able to live with yourself. You've got to be able to look at yourself in the mirror when you shave. Now, there comes a time when... You ought to sell gold bricks. You'd make a fortune. You're right about that, Mr. Denver. But the best you can do? No. He wanted alcohol flax, and then so do I. That was it, Tito. You're not serious, flax. You can't just turn your back on the man who loves you. That's right, Tito. You can't. I knew that guy was hard luck the day I met him. Going to marry him? I'm considering it. You got about a minute to make up your mind. I want what you got in your coat pocket there, Tito. That's the city of San Francisco, Duke. And it's mine. There's a half a million people out there think it belongs to them. So do I. Be smart, Duke. A good gambler knows enough to quit when he's ahead. You've done well tonight. Come on, walk out with your winnings. I'm calling you, Tito. Please, please, Duke, this is one of the things I don't want to do. You're a nice guy, Tito, sometimes. The answer is yes. This is going to cost you an awful lot of money. For those, I suppose your new city administration will double my taxes. Taxes? I haven't got a dime. You can double somebody else's taxes. We're going to Montana. Montana? Montana. You better come along. Uh, to Montana? I still say we should give him the works. The headquarters. Right up there. Do you mind? <laughs> Get up. With the compliments of the house. If you enjoyed this movie, then hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. Leave a comment if you like. Thanks for listening. Bye.